I uh, purchased this uh, cherry board from uh, Groff & Groff. It's um, 18 inches wide by uh, about uh, six feet long and uh, I hope to get the uh, top of the uh, handkerchief table both sides uh, out of this board. So I've got to flatten it. I don't have a 18 inch joiner so um, we've got the uh, old and the new here. This is a, a uh, joiner plate that I won from old school tools in, uh, in Great Britain and of course we have a more modern uh, number seven, Stanley number seven here. So we'll see which one uh, works best. So I'm using this uh, old wooden joiner here. And the board's pretty flat, as you can see. I'm going to cutting across the, the grain here. There's uh, some cupping here and here. But uh, starting to expose the grain, and it looks like a pretty nice looking piece. So we'll be uh, planing here for a little while. Well, as you can see, it's getting uh, pretty flat on one side. And again, we have a couple of low spots there. But uh, I'm buying large, and I like the color and the grain of this particular board. So I think we got a winner. We'll have to plane the other one and, and see uh, what it looks like. Well, I planed the two boards uh, to remove the the rough uh, surface, and um, as you can see here. The two boards are consecutive uh, in the saw, so I picked uh, an area where uh, if you can see the lines that are on there, that's going to be the two triangles that make up the top of the table. And as you can see, they're mirror images of each other, so that, uh, that should look pretty good. Uh, so the top uh, material, I think, is uh, straightened away, so i am got to pick up some wood uh, for the sides now. Well, this part of the board uh, isn't used uh, for the top, so I think I'm going to uh, chop it off. It's only about 36 inches long, which uh, a single piece of it would make uh, the two uh, front uh, uh, aprons. So um, I think that's where I'm going to get the material, and that way all the material will have come out of these two boards, which means the color and grain should match. Well, I'm cutting it the old-fashioned way. I could pull out my circular saw, but uh, I forgot to do a piece of video, but the um, three quarter inch tenons on the uh, aprons were straight tenons. So you got to pretend these aren't on here, but uh, I use my tenoning jink here and just uh, had set it up and ran it through to get a uh, 5 16 inch tenon on and then I uh, raised it and put a, a longer tenon on uh, this side, uh, which needed to be, and then um, in the following video you'll see how I did the uh, 45 degree shoulders uh, on here so uh, you have to pretend that I just did that. I'm cutting the uh, 45 degree angles on the tenons for the sides. The two, two sides have a, a 45 degree uh, angle here and they're straight on the other end so I'm using the table saw here to uh, take off the majority of the material. And the rest I'll do with a handsaw. 
cleaning up the uh, tenon shoulders here. I cut them on the table saw and got them as close as I thought safe. And uh, for with the hand saw. there. Well I selected the uh, front leg and so I'll do the easy uh, mortises first here and fit those two uh, sides uh, into the front leg and then uh, worry about the angled mortises next. I saved the cutoffs when I bandsawed the leg so I used that to support it and keep it square so I'm ready to cut the mortises now. And that's all there is to it. So the first set of mortises is done, the front leg, and then I have the back two here, and these are the angled mortises. So these are real tricky. I've got to make a V-block to hold them in the hollow chisel mortiser because the, the mortise begins right at this edge here on the point and proceeds uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch back here at a 45 degree angle. So uh, they're uh, going to be very careful uh, to get them in on that edge and uh, get them lined up correctly. So we got two of them to do here. Well this is the most difficult part of the process so far and that's putting the uh, angled mortises in the two front legs and uh, as you can see here I cut a v-block to uh, cradle the top of the leg and you can see the vertical line there and the most important thing is to keep it perpendicular so that the uh, mortise goes straight down into there and then the hardest part was to clamp it in the uh, the uh, tray there so I put the uh, cutoffs when I cut out the cabriolet legs back on to square up the leg and uh, as you can see there I added a few blocks to either side so I have it in there pretty good and uh, so the next thing to do will be mark out where we want the mortises uh, to be and uh, drill it. So here you can see the uh, angled mortises cleaned up and I just had to clean out the bottom but um, you know using that v-block they came out real good right on the edge there so that should prove uh, useful as we assemble them. Well I finished uh, cleaning up the mortises that you just saw me uh, drill out and uh, they came out pretty good. I'll try and show you. The mortise uh, was cut right along that line there at a 45 degree angle 
and then of course uh, earlier we had cut tenons and a straight tenon but put a, a 45 degree shoulder on the uh, side pieces here or aprons so they came out pretty good after I cleaned them up and then this rear piece here is a piece of soft maple and it's just placed in here it's three quarters of an inch thick and it it that's the way it, it's not really fast ever fastened to the sides the way that's done is uh, I'll take this piece of cherry and we'll put a tenon on here and a mortise in there and uh, we'll cut a, a short piece and put the hinge on here and slide it in and then this piece will be glued to the back piece uh, maybe I'll put a screw in it but that'll that's how that piece will be held in from being attached to this one likewise there'll uh, be a uh, short piece on this side that'll be tenoned in here and uh, oh it comes over maybe to about here and uh, again that piece will be glued uh, to this back piece and so that's how it holds in. The other half of this cherry piece will be the swing leg. So we'll put a hinge here and then a tenon on to the end of the swing out here and then mortise this leg into the hinged piece so that it will close to about here and so the the spacer the other uh, piece that's holding on this back piece will uh, complete uh, the uh, entire side so there'll be a mortise here that that goes into the, the swing we've got to build the hinge so um, that's uh, where what we'll be working on next this is what the uh, front of the table uh, will look like and um, of course the drop leaf is in the back but uh, I wanted to show you here we have the what I would call a regular knee block but in the back too uh, this whole uh, leg here the top of the leg and this knee has to be reshaped so that I can put a, a knee block here and it blends smoothly and rounded into the back two corners so there's a lot of shaping that has to be done and uh, that'll be done after uh, we glue it up and of course the uh, side panels here uh, have to be cut out uh, with the pattern uh, and I'll do that of course before we glue it up but there's no no rush to to get that done <laughs> 